If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. Here with a legacy deck tech for you, this deck has zero reserve list cards. It is crazy, it is janky, now that's not to say that it's necessarily cheap, and you'll see why in just a moment, but let's show you I have <laughs> this covering up the deck. The first line is going to be insane, but you might know where this is going after you see the first bit. See, this is actually not a n totally new idea, this is my take on a deck. Let me show you, this is Restore Balance. This is a card that has no casting cost. You cannot cast this from your hand. You see how there's not a symbol up there? Well, there's a reason for that. In order to cast it, you have to first suspend it, and it has to suspend six. Now, this is balance. This is fixed balance from Time Spiral Block, well, Time Spiral itself. So what that means is that each of us are going to choose a number of lands, or rather, uh, we're going to sacrifice lands until we have as many as the player who has the fewest. So if you have one and I have two, I have to sack one. I get to choose which one, but I have to sack it. Same thing with creatures, same thing with number of cards in hand. Great. You can tell that a symmetrical effect like this is going to be completely well received in this deck. We're totally going to play this fairly, right? No. No, we actually have a bunch of Cascade cards to break. We'll, we'll get to that. So, Cascade. Cascade is, uh... Where did the last one go? There's supposed to be four Shardless Agents here. It's buried there, somewhere in there. Uh, Cascade is a neat little mechanic. It says when you cast this spell, you exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land that costs less. You already can see where this is going. <laughs> you may cast it without paying its mana cost. If it doesn't have a mana cost, like Restore Balance, you get to cast it anyway. Ta-da! <laughs> Everything in this deck, all of these Cascade cards, basically, so, I just showed you Shardless Agent. Here's Bloodbraid Elf. Bloodbraid is four mana. Bloodbraid can cascade into Shardless Agent, which is three. Shardless Agent can cascade into Restore Balance, which is zero. Everything in this deck that has Cascade will eventually cascade into Restore Balance. And we're going to break that symmetry wide open <laughs> in just a moment. But first, let's t just really quickly take a look at all of the other Cascade cards. So, you see, it's supposed to be four Shardless Agent, four Bloodbraid Elves, four Deny Realities. It's a blue card, which will matter in just a bit, for you know exactly why. But occasionally, you'll need to return target permanent to its owner's hand. Uh, Restore Balance won't deal with things like artifacts and enchantments, and occasionally it matters that Deny Reality will. So, that's certainly important. Then we have Ardent Plea as a four of. If you happen to Cascade, you only have one creature, say a Shardless or a Bloodbraid. The Exalted can matter, but usually this is just another way to Cascade, and it's not completely useless. And it's three mana, so we can get to it more readily. And then the single Cathari Remnant, which is just our Will of the Wisp. It's a flying creature that has it's a zero one it has regenerate so if we need to in a pinch we can block and block and block and block and block with this thing if we absolutely have to it's not where we'd like to be but we can now this all lo okay so you're gonna cascade into restore balance okay so that's not great you you'll notice that Restore Balance is going to resolve before the card that has Cascade resolves. That means I won't have any creatures on the field when Restore Balance resolves, and then these will, you say a Shardless Agent, and I'll have a creature. So I'll get to break the symmetry that way. But if that were all, that's fine, but that's definitely not Legacy playable. But wait, there's more. Skip over to the bottom real quick. We're also going to try to get them on lands. This is where the deck really has some power. I have 20 lands that look like this. I don't know what they're called, what this particular cycle is called. I've just heard them referred to as sack lands. So here we go. They all come into play tapped. They all generate a color if you tap them normally, or they generate one of their allied colors. So blue's allies are white and black. If you sack it, you'll make one of each allied color instead. We do this for all five shards. So we have, let's think of them as 
Esper, Jund, Bant, Grixis, and Naya. And that's what we have here. They all say sacrifice. Now wait a minute. If I sacrifice these lands and restore balances on the stack, hide that for just a second, I have no lands. Now my opponent is going to have to lose all of their lands. So this helps us to break the symmetry on that as well. They have no creatures and they have no lands. We get to actually have a board. Now you'll notice this is a lot of lands. Uh, spoiler alert, these are all four ofs. Seven times four, we're looking at 28 lands. <laughs> By the way, really quickly, Archaeological Dig makes either one colorless mana normally, doesn't come in tapped, or sack it to make one mana of any color. Crystal Vein either makes one mana of any of no color or two mana of no color if we sack it. So this is our the closest that we have to an actual soul land. So what these do is they give us a slow ramp and they let us break the symmetry of restore balance. So the game plan is typically play your tap lands, sack them into anything with cascade, and then cascade into restore balance. Now, you have no lands, so they'll have no lands. You had no creatures, so they'll have no creatures. Then you'll get creatures, hopefully you cascaded into some. And you, you're great, you're solid, right? Well, not quite. This deck already, if this is all we're doing, has some pretty strong weaknesses. For one, you'll notice that Restore Balance needs to resolve. If they counter that, we have just Armageddon, one side Armageddon ourselves. And so that's kind of a problem. Even if we're leaving the field with, say, what's a good case, Deny Reality something, Blood Braid Shardless, that's great, but that's definitely not legacy playable. We need that Restore Balance to resolve. And that's why we have this whole bit. <laughs> we have, this is, this is the unique take. I, I haven't seen another Casca Balance do this. And that's it, Casca Balance. We have four Force of Wills, which with, by the way, spoiler alert, let's see, we have 21, if I'm not mistaken, let's see, do 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, we have, yeah, 4, 8, 12, 13, we have 17, oh, because I, okay, I, I took some cards out, that's right. Uh, we have 17 blue cards, so in that case, let's see, that's a 33.6% chance to have forcible blue card in our opening hand. That means a bit better than a third of the time, we'll have some counter magic on turn one to protect ourselves, to protect restore balance. And that's great. That's fine. That's well and good. Force of Will is, a, I think, essential for this deck. I don't think you can really run it without Force of Will because you need, 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 need to protect restore balance in a format where Force of Will is the third most played non land. It's Brainstorm, Ponder, Force of Will. Whew! Okay, but beyond that, that's not enough, because this is only going to help us, like I said, one in every three games. Then we have Chancellor of the Annex. If you reveal this from your opening hand, you basically put a Mana Tie, the Force Spike, on the first spell that they cast. They're going to have to pay one, or it gets countered. So either you just make them run a spell into it on turn one and it gets countered, or make them have two lands and cast it for a little bit extra. Either way, that usually means that you're buying yourself a turn, and... This is useful against a host of decks. Now, of course, Cavern of Souls is going to be an issue, but there aren't that many Cavern decks, and that's, that's kind of it. <laughs> Alright, so these give you some counter magic, both to protect Restore Balance, and also one of the other weaknesses of this deck is it's kind of slow. You may notice these all come in tapped, and the ones that don't come in tapped aren't going to be giving us our game plan. You can't really go off on turn one. The soonest you can do something is turn two, say, like a Shardless Agent. That's not great. Just a Shardless Agent is definitely not getting you there. You need to do something else to stall the game for a little bit, or to do something on those first two turns against combo decks. Ad Nauseam Tendrils would, without some sort of protection like this, eat you every time. Uh, Tess, the Epic Storm, Char Belcher, um, what? High Tide? There are all kinds of decks, I'm sure. A lot of the, with well, the Oops All spells, the decks that Legacy is known for having in these insanely fast builds. Yeah, you, you, you're worried, for obvious reasons, and these give you some protection. The third weakness of this deck, you'll notice that the creatures that I've given aren't typically that fast. If, for whatever reason, your only creature is a Shardless Agent, to give sort of a worst-case scenario, 
That is a 10 turn clock. That is really slow. That is not where you want to be. This is legacy. In 10 turns, your opponent is going to find something to get themselves out of it, even if it's just planes, swords to plowshares. Okay, you're stuck. You do have two restore balances, so you can go off twice. So you can start, you can get rid of their hand, get rid of their field twice. But that's really all. You need to have some speed. And yeah, Bloodbraid Elf has haste and is 3-2 instead. But something else I've been trying is Gurmog Gangler. Now, previous lists that I've seen will run Nihilith instead. Nihilith is a 4-4. Four -four. You suspend it for one in black. And it suspends seven, but you don't care because it gets a time counter taken off. I believe that the wording is every time a card an opponent controls is put into a graveyard, something to that effect. Which means that your restore balance will actually take a, <laughs> a bunch of the time counters off Nihilith and usually bring it on. But that's a 4-4 with fear. This is a 5-5. So it's slightly bigger. The fear honestly doesn't matter as much these days in Legacy as it probably used to. Um, yeah. Gurmog Angler is, uh, it's bigger. Now, I only run one because I treat Delve cards as if they were legendary. Almost completely. You don't have to do it that way. It's probably wrong. But the more that you have, the more of an opportunity cost there is. You don't want multiple copies to get stuck in your hand. And so the way you reduce that the most is by having just one. Feel free to disagree. You can move some cards around to do that. But often the way that this will manifest itself is you'll have extra mana that you're floating off of your, uh, your soul lands, your shard lands. Uh, your sack lands, there we go. And you can spend one black from the floating mana on the Gurmog Angler, in addition to delving away whatever you dropped into your yard, whatever lands there were, and any other floating mana that there might have been. Even if you can't do that, you might have enough in your graveyard that you can get to Gurmog Angler actually being cast reasonably quickly enough. That's why there's one, it's not great, certainly not an early gameplay, but it helps to speed up your clock. And so you'll notice that Usually, the creatures that will actually be doing the beating here, four Shardless Agent, four Bloodbraid Elf, and a Gurmog Angler. That's not much, but if we've actually locked our opponent, not locked our opponents, if we've Armageddon the board, not having lands and not having creatures means you might have enough time that you can get there. Okay, one more thing I want to talk about before we get to the sideboard real quick. We do have other creatures, not you, Cathar Grimnick, you don't count. We do have other creatures. We have Chancellor of the NX, but at 7 mana and with white, white, white in the cost, that is tough to get to. You may be thinking, though, well, if we switch the lands up just a little bit, surely, surely we can get to Chancellor. And yeah, even with just this mana base, you get white from Tinder Farm, you get white from Ancient Spring, and you get white from Irrigation Ditch. And Crystal Vein makes a good bit of mana, so you can, you can actually get there, and now, archaeologically, you can get there eventually. That's true, it's possible. If you want to make it a little bit easier to get up to white, white, white in the cost, you can replace some number of these, whichever are the least useful, with, and, and honestly, it's probably, it's probably geothermal crevice, actually, but some number, you replace them with Ruins of Trocare, which comes in uh, tapped, it makes white mana, or if you sack it, it makes white, white. Now that gives us a little bit more that we can put into Chancellor, if you want to make that another win condition in the deck. And it's a great card, it gives you something to do in the opening hand, and something to do with it later on, rather than usually just sitting there. That being said, the reason I'm not doing that, partially is because I want a little bit more black mana. Um, let's see, we have more need for black mana in the cost for our, blue is obviously the most important color. Next is black. We only have, not counting Chancellor, we only have four cards that have white and not counting Restore Balance. These don't count. <laughs> we only have four with white, but six with black mana. So black is slightly more important. Uh, but feel free to disagree. You might actually find that being able to hardcast Chancellor more readily is fine. It may make your games a little bit more consistent. Because, again, one of the ways you can lose is just by having a little 2-2 try to lay the beats down slowly and not so surely. Okay, now, this means, because we have this cask, and by the way, you're, you're noticing, all of these have a mana cost that's high enough that you won't ever accidentally cascade to them. I, I thought that was clear, but just, just in case it's not, you're never going to have to worry about that with these cards. 
that said, when we go to sideboards, you can think of us as having two kinds of cards. Cards that are high enough in mana cost you're never going to cascade into them, and cards that are 2 CMC or lower where you will definitely cascade into them. In the latter case, we're often going to be taking out Restore Balance and replacing it with whatever else we have there. And that's where our sideboard just opens wide and becomes, weirdly enough, one of the more consistent sideboards that you can get. Now, that being said, I have not seen, I, I don't know what, I'll give you some ideas, but I'm going to play it really milk toast, really vanilla to start off, and you'll see why. Okay, so going into sideboards, we have, da 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 da, professionalism. Alright, so we start off with rest in peace, as a four of. These do not have to be four ofs, they're four ofs for me. Partially because it's fine if you have it in the opening hand as well, and partially because I'm not sure what else to put in. I have some options I'll give you, so this almost certainly would not end up being a 4 of later on. You could have it just as a 2 of, because you can cascade into it. So, yeah, if they're in the hand, great. If you're casting it on turn 2 or 3 off cascade, at least it gives you effectively... What, what is it? You have 17 cascade cards in the deck. Yeah, it's like giving you 19 copies of this in the deck. It's, it's pretty good. Alright, and so it probably end up being two rest in peace, but I'm running four. Uh, yeah, we have graveyards in our meta, and it's, it's really solid. Okay, cool. Next we have Damping Sphere. You're noticing a theme here. Alright, so Damping Sphere is going to turn all of the, the soul lands, the lands that generate extra mana, into just regular old waste. It makes it where those lands only tap for one mana, but that's not usually what we care about, because, yeah, there's Eldrazi aggro, there's Cloud Post, there's Mud, but what we care mostly about is the second part of it, the second paragraph. Each spell a player cast costs one more to cast for each other spell that player has cast this turn. That, again, hits those aforementioned Storm decks, or Storm-like decks, like Oops All Spells. That gives us something to do against them. You're going to notice... A, Restore Balance is great against a lot of fair decks. It does jack all most of the time against combo decks, against that sort of linear fast strategy. We're just too slow to get it out, and even once we do, they can often come back and win anyway through it. That means Restore Balance is going out. You take those out, you can bring in two Damping Spheres, two Rest in Peace. Damping Sphere is a little easier for me to have as a four of, because you can cast it, even on turn one with Crystal Vein, a lot more readily. It's something that can come out because of it being colorless much more readily than, say, a Rest in Peace. But yes, again, Ant, Tess, Charbelcher are the, the bigger ones that I'm aware of, but then there are other combo-like decks, like Oops All Spells is budget enough that you're, you might see it more commonly in your meta. Now, Burn seems to be one of the harder matches for this deck. As best I can tell, Burn seems hard to do. Restore Balance is okay, but it, it's not the be-all, end-all for them. They can get by on just a land, maybe two. So they can rebuild rather quickly. That said, Leyline of Sanctity is a little awkward because you can actually cascade into it if you don't take out Deny Reality. But if you don't take out Deny Reality, then you, or if you, yeah, if you take out Deny Reality, you don't have anything against, say, a Sulfuric Vortex. So Late Land of Sanctity is a little awkward. It's a little hard. I'm not sure if that's quite right. But it's something that I'm trying out because it has utility beyond just burn. It has utility against combo decks that care about targeting you. And we also have Pox in my meta, so Ley Line is really good there. Alright. Lastly, Misdirection is for other Force of Will decks. It's for decks that want to be countering your Restore Balance. So yeah, Force of Will, your Force of Will is, is obviously good. Misdirection is also pretty good. And yeah, Misdirection could come in in other matches, but usually what you're going to want it for is I, I will redirect your Force of Will to Misdirection itself, for instance, so that your Restore Balance survives it. Other utility, you can bring it in against Burn. It's not great. You can cause a Lightning Bolt to hit their own Goblin Guide, but it's not great. But yeah, so that's, that's another thing. And occasionally it'll come in against other matchups. Now, I really don't think I can take out the Misdirections because of how much I want them. I need them against Forcible decks. And I can't play something similar like Defense Grid because that'll knock us out of Restore Balance occasionally. So, I... These are pretty well set in my book. Three misdirections seems pretty hard to argue with for me. That said, 
A lot of these are up for debate. There are more. So for example, if you happen to have mud in your meta, I see that every now and then, you can run Stony Silence. I know, I know, but it's an option. If you want to have something else against Burn, you could cascade into Lone Missionary or Sanctimony or Absolute Law or, or just whatever, Warmth or Chill or all of these other cards. You can cascade into them and you can still have Leyline of Sanctity in your deck. So, for example, one way you could go about it is take out Deny Realities, the four of them, and or Force of Wills, or whatever, and uh, Restore Balance, and have Lone Missionary, which is kind of a two-for-one, sometimes better against Burn, because it's a two-one, so it could actually deal with, say, a Goblin Guide or an Eidolon. Cool! Uh, Damping Sphere, y you could experiment with some other hate on combo decks, like Thorn of Amethyst, for instance. Um, or for Rest in Peace, you could experiment with some other cards like Graft Digger's Cage, which actually cares about the graveyard too, so it'll hit Natural Order, for instance. You have options. You have lots of options. Experiment. Uh, heck, even like if you have that one guy running Super Friends Dot deck, a uh, Phyrexian Revoke. I don't know. I, there's, there's a lot of things you can do. You can take this. It's a choose your own adventure in the sideboard, which is one of the more fun things I've found about the deck. I am being very uncreative here, only having four. Partially because there's so much unexplored territory. I'm curious to know what you think I should put in. If I were to, say, have two Rest in Peace, two Damping Spheres, I don't know. You could still run four Ley Lines, but like, uh, Lone Mission, you could run Aegis of the Gods, so you could have the Ley Lines to give you Hexproof, and then Aegis of the Gods to give you Hexproof in a way that you can cascade into. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, the little 2-1 you have Hexproof, dude. Uh, just, there are all kinds of ways that you can go about this. You can find some life gain, some other life gain cards. Uh, uh, usually, though, you're not going to want anything in your sideboard for fair, linear, creature, aggro, mid-range decks, because Restore Balance is usually fine for those anyway. Cool. Alright, so once again, I really do look forward to your suggestions. Heck, just if you have so many you want to make a pace bin, by all means, I am A-OK -okay with this. I am open to... I'm, really, I'm gonna try some of these options out. Whatever you put in the comments, if it makes any sense. I'm going to try that out. If it's CMC 2 or less, and if it hates on something that this deck normally would be weak to, please go for it. All ears. Alright, that's it. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you later. Bye-bye!